Alright guys, welcome back to another WWE broadcast. I am once again joined by Canadian Yorker. By the way, Canadian Yorker did not show up for the last broadcast because he had other plans, so I had to do the last broadcast solo. Um, I am joined by Canadian Yorker. Welcome back. Good to be back. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How about you? Good, good. We are recapping... We are recapping this past um, Monday Night Raw, which was yesterday on September 25th, 2023, from the Toyota Arena in Ontario, California. And we are almost to the past to Fastlane 2020 Switch, which, by the way, two matches have been announced for Fastlane, so I can't wait to see the results once Fastlane is over. Um, but today we are recapping Monday Night Raw, September 25th, which was yesterday night. Um, so we have a lot to talk about. So getting into this um, recap, um, the show opens up with Cody Rhodes making an entrance. Cody Rhodes, like always, wants to talk about Jay Uso, but he was interrupted once again by the Judgment Day. Uh, Rhea Ripley did not show up again because of the vicious attack by Nia Jack a couple uh, weeks ago, but only Dominic Mysterio, uh, the undisputed tag team champions, Damon Priest and Finn Balor interrupts Cody Rhodes. Um, and Cody Rhodes started talking crap about mommy Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio didn't like it. And um, Damon Priest just trash talked back and went back and forth until Cody had enough and said that he wanted to fight all three of them. And they're saying, oh, Cody Rhodes has a death wish, but all of a sudden, Jey Uso comes out of nowhere and aids Cody Rhodes. The two men are standing by, side by side, but the number games, two on three, is still, um, still a, a tough situation. But then Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn making a four on three. Um, Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, Cody Rhodes, and Sami Zayn standing tall, while um, the Judgment Day kind of fall back until... J.D. McDonough comes out in even odds, bringing out two steel chairs. And the brawl starts um, with just first J.D. JD McDonough, Dominic Mysterio, and um, Finn Balor starting up the brawl, three on four. David Priest kind of hesitated and then went to the ring, and he was by himself. And then he got, um, David Priest got cornered by all four men, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Jey Uso, and... Um, Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes hitting a steel chair to the back of Damon Priest egging the Simmons. So, uh, what did you think of this first opening um, promo? Um, there's a lot to unpack there. There's so much that happened in the opening sequence of Raw. Um, once again, you have Sami Zayn. Um, I mean, um, um, what's his name? JD McDonough. JD McDonough. J.D. McDonough coming out of nowhere and aiding the Judgment Day, you know, it's 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 quite something. This man has some sort of serious loyalty to to the Judgment Day, and no matter how much uh, Damian Priest does not like J J.D. McDonough, uh, he's certainly proving his worth to them um, because he helped them win to get this win against against um um sam sammy zane and kevin owens against in their tag team championship match and uh damian priest um and the judgment day really have to take a look at this where it's worth because he's really showing his worth to the judgment day so um honestly you know he's he's really putting his time and effort into helping them grow. Uh, I, I I honestly I I think you know what he's doing is is he's doing his thing as the Judgment Day's minion and taking on the the role that Rhea Ripley has filled and is just being a pest is all he is being the pest that he is. So. Uh, at, at, you know, Seth, uh, um, so, so Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and Jay Uso are teaming up with, uh, you know, to to fight against the Judgment Day. Um, honestly, the Judgment Day has a lot of things that they still have to work out. They they that they they put the things behind them, and um, I honestly don't understand their obsession with. 
with Jay Uso. You know, what's what's the obsession so far? You know. Yeah, and um and Jay Uso made a hilarious comment later saying that he doesn't wanna he didn't want to join a bunch of emos. <laughs> So, um, with purple hair, so that was hilarious. And then, um, and um, I don't know. It's just like, um, it's just a, it's just a difficult situation with it. But we have to see what happens. But um, what the hell is this? Um, sorry about that, guys. Something just popped up on my computer, and it was in the recording. Uh, but moving over, moving forward. Sorry. Um. Alpha Academy makes their entrance, making it to the first match of the evening, which was a complete domination. Bronson Reed versus one half of Alpha Academy, Otis. Um, honestly, I don't really have too much to talk about this. Otis got absolutely completely destroyed by Bronson Reed. Um, you know, shoulder block, um, you know, headlock. Um, it just, the huge headlock on Otis, and then it just, I don't think this... I don't think this match lasted five minutes. Like I, I don't even know. But um, Bronson Reed gets the easy win by pitfall with the seven four seven splash tsunami on splash on top of the rope, beating Otis by pitfall. Um, I don't know if you have anything to say about this match, but um, yeah, Bronson Reed defeats Otis one half of the Alpha Academy by pitfall with the seven four seven splash. What did you think of this short match? I guess. It was a short match, and honestly, I thought Otis would put a, put up a, a much better fight. I think it would last a lot longer because he's a big guy too, just like Bronson Reed. It doesn't make sense that Bronson Reed would do all this damage to Otis and not get away with it. Um, Otis has to put it in his shots too. So uh, that's all I got to say about that. All right, um, moving on. Um, a lot of backstage segments. Uh, we see um, the return. We see the return of um, Tegan Knox, who I haven't seen for a while now. When um, Becky Lynch is in the house, new NXT Women's Championship, and Becky and Lynch and Tegan Knox had a little chat, and um, basically that's pretty much it. And um, yeah, nothing. That's really what happened at the end. Um, Keegan Knox getting confronted um, by Natalia, uh, setting up a match between the two, which we'll get on later. But um, going on to the next match, we got one half of Imperialism, Luke Wick Kaiser versus Tom So um, Psych. Uh, Luke Wick Kaiser versus Tom So. I'll just say that. Um, honestly, it just didn't go. To, this match didn't go. Uh, was okay, I guess. Um, it went back and forth until, um, yeah, it was a jumping knee that um, got him the win. So, Tom Souls defeats Ludwig Kaiser by a uh, pitfall. Um, what did you think of this match? Mm. Kaiser is starting to show that he is the weakest link of the Imperium, and he has to be replaced. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, by the way, after this match, um, it's announced that um, Tom Souls is going to be the next challenger to Gunther's Intercontinental title, but I'm sorry, Gunther's going to retain, so screw all that, <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, I, I just don't see um, Tom Souls Senpa winning, it's like Gunther is just so unstoppable, I don't even know who can take the title away from Gunther, but um, we can talk about Gunther later, but um, um, yeah, next match, like I said, it was Natalia versus Tegan Knox NXT Women's Championship number one contenders match, so the winner of this match would go on to face either Becky Lynch or Tiffany Stratus. Uh, Becky Lynch and Tiffany Stratus will face, um, like I said, I don't, I'm not going to be doing NXT recaps, but um, Becky Lynch and Tiffany Stratton is going to be facing off in the Extreme Rules match for the NXT Women's title at No Mercy. So the winner of Natalya and versus Keegan Knox will face off against whoever is the NXT Women's Championship. Hopefully it's Becky Lynch. Um, I don't know. It makes sense that Tiffany wins, but we have to see what happens. But um, Natalia versus Tegan Knox with Becky Lynch on commentary. Um, 
It went back and forth. A lot of headlocks in this um, match. Um, a lot of counters. It went back and forth until Tegan Knox went by her finisher, the shiniest wizard. Um, I don't even know what finisher looked like. Um, but Tegan Knox defeats Natalia by pitfall, becoming the number one contender. So she will face either Becky Lynch or Chris, uh, Tiffany Stratus um, for the NXT Women's Championship. So what do you think of this match? Hmm. I uh, believe that this match is, you know, we'll just have to see how the match goes. But whoever wins the women's championship, it will be the contender for the women's championship. Um, so it's going to be, that's going to be interesting. I don't have much to say about it, but we we'll just have to see how, um, how, how it goes. Yeah, all right. Um, next segment, um, like I said, another um, backstage segment. Damon Priest is livid at JD McDonough, screams in his face, telling him that um, he ate us, he hit us, he got hit by a steel chair because of him, and yelled at him, saying that he had never going to be part of Judgment Day, and he's best that he leaves now with Finn Balor with a concerned face looking on. Um, so that's not good for JD McDonough. Um, but uh, moving on, Seth freaking Rollins um, enters, opening up a promo, and basically he obviously has his concern about um, his, his sick and tired um, game that Shinsuke Nakamura has been playing with him. Um, he says that um, he told Shinsuke Nakamura that he doesn't accept this challenge right now, he's going to move on to another challenger. But uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, like he said, like I said before, this guy is great. As a heel, he's like a, like an evil heel right now. Um, opening up these packages, video packages, him speaking in Japanese, um, and this is where the first fast lane match happens. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura said that um, um, Seth Rollins' weakness is his back, and that his his daughter won't will be so disappointed in him and stuff like that, which hit a nerve on Seth Rollins. And um, Shinsuke Nakamura said that he wants this match at Fastlane to be a last man standing match. So wow. Um last man standing match at Fastlane between Seth Freakin' Rollins and Shinsuke Nakamura um for the World Heavyweight Championship. And basically um Seth Rollins uh, accepted this challenge. So that's official. The first match um of Fastlane is Seth Freakin' Rollins and Shinsuke Nakamura in the last man standing match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um honestly I can't wait for this match. Um but I can say Nakamura is just going to focus on the back, so um, big rep to Seth freaking roll his back, so I don't know what's going to happen, but there you go. Um, what do you think of this segment, and what did you think of this first um, announced match between these two guys? Oh, man. This is a big, big, big reveal that you said last man standing match? Last man standing Shinsuke. match at Fastlane between Shinsuke and Seth. Shinsuke is going to put the beating down on, on Seth's back and beat him down so bad he's gonna be yeah he's not gonna survive it i mean unless you have it, it there's still that threat though of damien please coming <laughs> coming out man there's still that threat <laughs> that's still possible that is still that is so possible with damien please coming out and just like you know whoever seth, seth rollins wins and damien's catches that thing he's done He's going to win. He'll be a world heavyweight champion and tag team champion. I mean, that's going to be crazy. My, um, only, my but, only concern is I'm still not convinced that Seth Rollins is going to lose his title yet. Like, there's still, there's still advertisement of possibly a Seth Rollins versus a Roman Reigns match at Survivor Series. But I'm not going to... There might be just war games. I'm not even sure. The thing is, Seth could lose, but it's Survivor Theory war games. They're not. There might not be the traditional champion versus champion. But I did see like a lot of like advertisement for Seth freaking Rollins versus Roman Reigns. But we gotta see. So um, it's we gotta wait until fast late um to see what happens. So it's gonna be an interesting match and see how it ends up. But um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I mean. I mean, you you have you have um, at that way, and I think it's I think I, you probably mentioned it that um, John Cena and uh, the, and 
you know, Solo and Jimmy are doing their thing over there. And then Roman Reigns, of course, is is doesn't have a challenger, so you know, he might be facing Seth Rollins, you never know, but Cody Rhodes is doing his thing. Um, there is there is a chance people have been talking about it right after this roll. There is a chance that we might see men's survival war games, Judgment Day, um, Judgment Day versus Jey Uso, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Cody Rhodes in the fifth member. So we have to see what can happen. I can see like war games between the Judgment Day and all those guys, Jey Uso, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and um, Cody Rhodes in the fifth member who has a grunt about Judgment Day. Um, I don't even know who else has a grunge, but I can see that. But, um, yeah, we can talk about that later if we can. Um, but moving forward, um, Dominic Mysterio, bleh, uh, <laughs> defending the um, NXT North American Championship. I give him credit, though. I give him credit. But uh, Dominic Mysterio defending the NXT North American Championship against Dragon Lee. Um, a lot of NXT stuff going on on Raw. Um, I guess I can talk about a little bit of the NXT. Dragon Lee reminds Dominic Mysterio like his father because Dom Dragon Lee has like a Rey Mysterio like math. So I think that's why Dominic Mysterio has been having a grudge against Dragon Lee. But um, this is why I said um, this is why I said I give props to Dominic. Good job! You finally won a match without any help. Good job. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna um, say, yeah, Dominic Mysterio for once won a match all by himself. Shocking. Wins with a frog splash on Dragon Lee to retain the NXT North American Championship. For once, Dom, you actually won a match by yourself. But um, what did you think of this match? <laughs> He's like... <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's so funny. You just congratulate him like he's like he's like he's a like he's a, a baby. Like how many how many how many times did he have to freaking have help to retain that title? <laughs> I don't. I can't even count how many times. But so, but like yeah. Win. On top of that, what did you think of this match? <laughs> um, I guess he, he gets his props. He won without any help. Congratulations. Congratulations, Tom. Congratulations, Boo Boo. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know what to say about that. But honestly, congratulations to him for winning his match against Dragon Lee. And I honestly think it's, this is a great feud for Dominic, for Dominic Mysterio because. Drum, Dragon Lee must must help him remember resemble his father, and he's really trying to get away from that, get away from his family image, and get away from who he is and establish himself as a his own person. So, uh, you know, he's he's really trying to he's he's doing that in his own way. Um, but you know, he he's he's, he's it, it's good that he has this feud. And um, you know, we might see Do we might see Dragon Lee winning against Dominic, and you know, we have this back and forth going on between them. So this is a this is this is really good for both of them. So, all right, guys, I'm just gonna say this quick: WrestleMania 40, Dominic Mysterio versus Rey Mysterio for the NXT title. Um, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the I don't. US title. The US, US title and NXT like combined. What if they do that? That'd be crazy. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, um, moving on, um, like I said, uh, there was a whole bunch of backstage segments, um, Kevin Owens, Sammy Day, Kevin Owens still doesn't trust Jey Uso, and then that's pretty much it, um, this was an interview by Nia Jax, uh, Michael Cole saying that he, she apologized for not paying attention to it. I don't know if I'm dumb to say this, but Nia Jax said she is the baddest human in all of WWE. I don't know if I want to say this, but that is a hint that I want to see Ronda Rousey come back and whoop that ass. Because Nia Jack basically said, this is what she said, she's the baddest human in all of WWE. Does, it, does not that sound familiar, guys, for Ronda Rousey? Baddest woman of all. Um, but um, <laughs> Zoe Stark comes in and interrupts. Just as soon as she gets to the ring, Zoe Stark gets into her face. And basically, Nia shoved her, and then they start the brawl and starting the match where Nia Jax completely 
um, dominates Zoe Stark with a bandy drop, destroying Zoe Stark. So Zoe Stark was pretty dumb to do that. Um, so Nia Jack defeated Zoe Stark easily. What are you thinking, Zoe Stark, by pitfall? So what did you think of this match? Uh, Nia Jax just leave, leave, just, just get, just get cut, get fired from the WWE, because she's intentionally injuring people. I, I, I don't like that. I, I don't really like her as a, as a, as a character. I don't like her as a person. I think she should just leave, leave WWE. Don't come back. You know, just leave because she's just too big, just too dominant. It's just too dominant in the women's division. That's not good for her. It's not good for other wrestlers. Well, it's good for her, but it's not good for the rest for the other, for the other female wrestlers who can't fight against her. You know, she she already injured three people. You know, she's actually, she's injuring Zoe Starks now. She's probably injured too. So, uh, yeah, she's just she should just leave. She's and 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 Ronda Rousey, uh, Sh- Shayna Baszler could take her on. You know, because she she beat Ronda Rousey, so she could Shayna Baszler could take could take on uh, could could come back and take I want on I her. want Ronda Rousey to return. I just like oh my god, I want her to return. Now I That's think her true. I think her contract expired, but I don't know. Um, has, she, w- has she fought against Has she fought against Nia Jax before in the past? I don't even know. Um, I don't even know, but um, by the way, um, moving on, I just want to get this done, but um, I'm not gonna, like I said, there's a lot of backstage moments, but I'm not going to talk about anymore. It's just Finn Balor congratulating Dominic. Yay. Um, without any help. Great. Um, but the next um, segment is uh, Miz TV. The Miz hosting Drew McIntyre and Miz TV. And basically just talk about um, Drew McIntyre um, hesitating. Um, you weren't here last week about when I was talking, doing the solo, um, Drew McIntyre walked out on, um, the New Day while they got attacked by the Viking Raiders, um, Drew McIntyre walked out on them, refusing to help them, so, uh, the Miz and the McIntyre had, um, a little bit of a talk on Miz TV, and they talk about Jey Uso too, not helping, um, Jey Uso, not helping Jey Uso while he gets attacked by Judgment Day, and the second week in a row, not helping the New Day while they get um, attacked by the Viking Raiders. So that's pretty much what the Miz TV was, and uh, Drew McIntyre just kept saying, shut up Miz, shut up Miz, when on New Day interrupted them. Um, basically, this which led to a one-on-one match between um, Drew McIntyre versus Kofi Kingston. So, um, what was your thoughts on the whole Miz TV um, segment? Well, Miz is definitely pushing his buttons as he usually does. And isn't he still feuding with LA Knight, or is he not feuding anymore? Um, I don't think he is. Not that I know of. No. Well, whatever, whatever with that. I mean, I guess that's gone for now. But, um, but the Miz pushes his buttons, trying to get Drew McIntyre to talk, but he doesn't want to talk. So, um, so so this Kofi Kofi Kingston. And Drew McIntyre feud is going to be awesome um, because Drew McIntyre, we can really see. I can really see the the transition of Drew McIntyre from this face, this baby face, into this heel. He's going back into his heel form, um, and so you know he's 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 this man's been through so much, and Jay Uso put him through so much um, that you know he probably enjoys seeing Jay Uso get beat up. And, and giving his own medicine, even though DJ Uso is trying to turn himself around. So, uh, he's, uh, Drew McIntyre is really changing. He's changing himself. All right. Um, by the way, I want to say that I made a mistake. It was not last week that the Viking Raiders um, started beating um, New Day. It was this match that they did second week in a row. Last week was um, last week was Drew walking out on Jey Uso. This week is um, um, Drew McIntyre again walking out on the New Day. So I apologize. I said, I said that it was Drew walking out on New Day last week. So I want to clarify that I made a mistake. But uh, moving on to the. Um, Moving on to this next match is Drew McIntyre versus Kofi Kingston. This is the match where the Viking Raiders interfered, um, attacking Austin um, Creed. Um, Kofi Kofi Kingston getting distracted. Um, Drew McIntyre hits them with the Claymore off of a distraction, getting the win one two three. 
Um, and again, like I said, Drew McIntyre for the second week in a row doesn't help anyone. Just watching um, Ivar, it was only one half of the Viking Raiders. Ivar attacks Kingston in the ring, um, and it was just a brutal attack. Um, a splash, a huge splash um, from top of the um, rope onto um, Kingston crushing him. Uh, Drew McIntyre just walks away. So um, it's obviously that we're going to see a, a huge heel for, for this Drew McIntyre. So what did you think of this match? Like I said, um, Drew McIntyre, this, his development into this heel character is, has been interesting. Um, the Viking Raiders are proving themselves to be great heel team. And Kofi Kingston, you know, he's it's like he's become mediocre. So he's just fighting in these media in the in the mediocre mediocre talent. Um and you know, he's he's still he's he's still got it. He's proving he's still got it. Um however, some you know, this 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 time around it was just too much for him. Just too, too much for him in the new day. All right, and the reason the Viking Raiders got interviewed right after saying that the reason why they took out um, New Day is because New Day took out the other half that wasn't there tonight. Um, New Day took Eric out of the fight, so the lady that's with them, I can't say her name. I think she's like her name's Sarah, I don't know. Valkman said that she, it was a I.I., so basically, oh, you hurt one of my guy, uh, our guys, we hurt one of yours. So that's basically even even. That's why they decided to tag New Day after that match. But uh, moving on to the main event, Judgment Day, Damon Priest and Van Baller defending the Undisputed Tag Team Championship against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And um, just so much in this match, just so many, so much chaos. I believe it was like Jay Uso coming out, um, Jay Nick McDonough getting involved. Like, let's just say everyone got the fuck involved. Like, and then it just eventually it. it it was a good match, but I'm just sick of the Judgment Day um, getting involved in stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's it ended up being um, J Nick J Nick J Dick McDonough just redeemed himself after getting yelled by Damon Priest. So I think next week Damon Priest is gonna um, praise um, J D McDonough next week. But um, you'll see why. Um, J Dick McDonough hits Sami Zayn right in the face with the title with. The referee didn't see it. Um, it went back and forth, and it just... Um, I already thought Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn were going to retain uh, after Kevin Owens hitting the stunner. Damon Priest dumps Kevin Owens out. Sami Zayn blessed him with a he hello you know kick, but um, JD clobbers Sami Zayn with one of the title belt. Damon Priest rolls over, rolls over, gets the 1-2-3 Judgment Day, retains the Undisputed Tag Team Championship by Pitfall off of us. Sneaky um, maneuver by JD McDonough, and basically uh, post match the two side brawl. So the whole Judgment Day, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Cody Rhodes, Jay Z, they all started to brawl, and that basically <laughs> ends the show. Um, what did you think of this match, main event match? Wow, what a wild, crazy ending! Wild, crazy finishing match. Um, there's a lot of things that happened in this in that match, and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing to see how much the uh, Judgment Day is growing. Um, you know, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens just can't seem to catch a break. They got to learn how to stop the interferences. That, that keep on happening to them because they 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 keep losing because of interferences. Um, even though they had inter they had their own interferences, uh, uh, Jay Uso and Cody Rhodes come out. Um, I don't think they paid attention too much for what was going. What they were paying attention attention to what's happening outside the match, but in like inside the ring. Um, they weren't really paying attention to anything. Um, so, you know, Judgment, we're going to have to see how Judgment Day does uh, when, when they, uh, whoever they face at, at Fastlane. So. 
Yeah, um, but um, before we get our um, before we get our um, thoughts on what grade we give this show, but um, yeah, by the way, that is the end of the show, guys. Um, but I do want to add a couple things. Um, so um, so yeah, there was two matches that were announced for Fastlane. It was like we said before, it was Seth Rick and Rollins defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Shinsuke Nakamura in the last man standing match. Um, the second match was announced actually last week you weren't here i was doing the solo um it was supposed to be john cena and aj styles versus the bloodline solo sokola and jimmy uso but um if you guys didn't see my um recap um solo and jimmy attacked aj styles in the backstage area sending him in the ambulance with the OC, um, leaving John Cena that he came out and then tried to attack the bloodline, but it didn't go his way. Um, so Sokola hitting two Samoan spikes on John Cena, and then Jimmy Uso taunting John Cena with the "You can't see me" and hitting a Uso splash on John Cena, and it's announced that John Cena will be facing the bloodline in a handicap match. Um, but the question is, is that actually going to happen, or there's probably going to be a surprise partner wedding? So AJ Styles is probably not going to be fit to team up with John. So the question is, is John Cena actually going to take on Jimmy Uso and Solo, or is a surprise partner going to come? So hopefully a surprise partner is going to come. And I did say my prediction, I said it might be Cody Rhodes, um... People are saying that Randy Orton might, um, there's rumors Randy Orton might make his return and team up with um, um, John Cena. Like I said, Randy Orton has unfinished business with the Bloodline. And the third option is The Rock or LA Knight. So that's just my prediction. But anyways, do you have any thoughts on what I just said? Or uh, It's going to be an exciting time with these with these matches happening at Fastlane. Uh, John Cena's facing, you know, in a, in a handicap match. Um, I think he's probably his game plan is to try to get the um, the matches done as fast as possible. So uh, there's 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 a lot of things to unpack. I'm I'm really excited to see how things go at Fastlane with everything and who's gonna win, who's gonna lose. We're gonna see how things go and. Um, we just take it one step at a time. All right, so that will get or that will do it for the recap. Um, in terms of grade, um, look with all the drama that happened in the main event, um, Judgment Day was the sneaky win. Um, on top of Dominic finally um getting his for his win without any help. Um, with some NXT, you know, um, people here, you know, kind of like Dragon Lee, but um. Yeah, I honestly thought this was an unbelievable great um show. So um just the second um grade I'm gonna give it or just my second time giving this grade, I am giving this show tonight this show uh, a minus. So what do you give this uh show? I'm gonna give it a B B minus. There's not much that happened. It's, it's there there was some pretty good matches, some wild matches. Uh, however, you know there wasn't a lot of it's it, there were a lot, a lot of backstage segments. However, um, more I think more could be done. More could have been done, um, like in the terms of uh, JD McDonough and uh, and, uh, and 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 the whole Judgment Day thing of working out how they're gonna how they're going to go after. Uh, you know, Sammy Zane, Cody Rhodes, Jey Uso, and, and and how they're going to win against Sammy Zane and Kevin Owens. Um, so I'll have to, you know, just see how things go with that. All right. So um, that will do it, guys. Thank you, five, thank you guys for watching this um, recap video of September 25th of uh, Raw. Um, I'm Brian Steele. Thank you guys for watching. One again, this is Canadian New Yorker. Hello. Uh, good night. Good night. Um, and we will see you guys in the next broadcast, um, which we have a difficult schedule, so we have to see when it is. So, see you guys later. See you later. Bye bye.